Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We are going to look at vector spaces and subspaces, a very, very important notion. Uh, so far, we have been talking about R2 and the vectors and lines and you know origin and things like that. Uh, we will define a very useful object called a subspace and also generally define this notion of a vector space. Okay. What is this vector space R2? R2 is a set of vectors which we write as x comma y. Notice how I have shifted to the row notation x comma y, x and y are real. This ends up being an example of a vector space, what is called a vector space. Now, what what is needed for a vector space? How do you how do you generalize from here or something? We'll we'll generalize later, but for now, what else is needed in a vector space? What properties of R2 are crucial for the vector space? First of all, you need scalars and vectors. Okay, in R2, the scalars are real and vectors are v, which we write as x comma y, okay, in, in coordinate form like this. Okay, so this you need scalars, you need vectors. What should you be able to do with vectors? You should be able to add vectors. Okay. How do you take v1 and v2 and add them? Okay, so v1 plus v2, you know how to add, right? So v1 is x1, y1, v2 is x2, y2, v1 plus v2 is x1 plus x2, y1 plus v2. We know the addition. And v1 plus v2 also becomes a vector, right? It is also x1 plus x2, comma y1 plus y2. It's also another vector. Okay. So when you add two vectors, you should get a vector. Another operation you can do is something called scalar multiplication. You take a scalar c from your set of scalars and then you multiply with the vector v, you should get another vector. So, you should be able to define addition, you should be able to define scalar multiplication. Both these operations with vectors you have to define. Once you define these, you need also a few more properties. Okay, So, these are sort of technical properties, the addition needs to be commutative, associative, it should have an identity, it should have an inverse. Scaling should have identity, it should be distributive over the addition. If all these technical properties are true, which you can verify, you have a vector space. So, you need scalars, vectors, operations and properties for the operation. Okay, So, this we will use later on to abstract, but for now all these properties are satisfied for R2 and that is what makes it a vector space. Okay. Now, what are subspaces of R2? Okay, So, R2 is a big space, it has some interesting subspaces. Okay, What are these subspaces? A set S of vectors in R2 is said to be a subspace. If if you add two vectors in the subspace, you should be within the subspace. Okay. If you scale a vector in the subspace, you should still be within the subspace. So it's like a mini vector space inside a big vector space. Right? What is the big vector space? You have two vectors, you added them, you got another vector. You multiplied, you scaled them, you got another vector. You did linear combinations with vectors, you got another vector. That was your vector space. Now, what is going to happen in a subspace? In a subspace, if you take linear combinations of vectors, you will be inside the subspace only. Okay, you won't go out. A subspace is closed under addition and scaling. So this is what this is what makes subspaces very very interesting, right? So they are like mini vector spaces inside a bigger vector space. That's what a subspace is. Okay. So here are examples of subspaces. Okay, are there subspaces? You may ask. Okay, so I'll show you examples. If you only take the origin, okay, if you take the set S to be only the origin. It is a subspace. Why? Because if I take origin and add it to itself, I get the origin. If I take the origin and scale it by any real number, I get the origin. So the origin is closed under addition and scaling. So the origin becomes a subspace. But it's a trivial subspace. Okay, so it's not a very interesting subspace. But remember that origin is always a subspace. You should remember this. Okay. Another very interesting subspace is a line through the origin. Okay. So, if you have a line through the origin, if you take any two points and add them, you will get another point on the same line. If you take any point and scale, you will get the same line, right? So, the line through the origin is a subspace. Okay, So, origin is a subspace, line through the origin is another subspace. A lot of people will tell you wrongly that any line is a subspace. That is not true. Okay. A line that does not pass through the origin is not a subspace. You can check it. You can write one line not passing through the origin and then multiply a point on that line by a constant, you will get it will not be on that line. It will go off somewhere else. Okay. So, if you take this point for instance on the line which I have marked as maybe x, if I divide it by 2, I will get somewhere here. No, it is not on the line. Right? It will be on the line through the origin and this. So, you can easily show that this, these kind of lines are not subspaces. Only lines through the origin are subspaces. The other very obvious subspace which is also the original vector space is the entire plane S equals R2. The whole thing itself is a subspace. It turns out there are no other subspaces in R2. 
okay these are the only three sub types of subspaces the entire r2 which is just one the origin alone which is just one and then you have the whole bunch of lines every line through the origin there are infinite number of lines through the origin right all of those are subspaces okay individually every line is a subspace uh, in, the, in r2 these are the only subspaces we'll see sort of an argument for why uh, this is true soon enough okay so this is subspaces okay. now a very very crucial property of span which makes it very very interesting and in this context is span of a set of vectors is a subspace okay this is actually very easy to prove i'm going to prove it for you if you define let's say span of u1 u2 u3 so on it's basically the set of all linear combinations right alpha beta gamma multiplying u1 u2 u3 adding all linear combinations of u1 u2 what happens if you add two vectors which are linear combinations the sum of two linear combinations is another linear combination okay so it's closed under addition what happens when you scale a linear combination you'll still get another linear combination okay so this all, all linear combinations is a powerful construct so very easily you see that the uh, any span span of any set of vectors is closed under addition and scaling okay so you get uh, span being a subspace okay so in r2 span is always origin line through origin or the entire plane we have seen that already right the span of any set of vectors can either be origin line through origin or the entire plane nothing else is possible in r2 right so which means uh, all the spans which uh, which we saw so far are interesting subspaces okay so here is a terminology which we will use span of v1 v2 v3 so on is called the subspace generated by v1 v2 v3 so v1 v2 v3 all the linear combinations generate the entire subspace so this is the span and the connection to its subspace okay so this is an important connection to recall and remember 